The coronavirus is dominating headlines. As it spreads across the globe, it literally is consuming every industry, the economy, politics, travel, and affecting our personal lives. Confusion, fear, panic, hysteria. What are we to do? Quarantines. Every hour, every day brings all kinds of new challenges. We are taught that everything is a lesson in life. If an event even affects one individual, you need to think, be introspective, do a little soul searching. Especially one that is literally affecting the entire globe, impacting us all. It's hard to ignore the divine providence that we're literally approaching Purim, the holiday of Purim. And the connection is glaring. Coronavirus comes from the word corona. Why? Because of the crown-like clusters on the surface of the virus. When you magnify it, you can see it. Crown-like. It originated in 2019 in China. That's why it's called COVD. Coronavirus disease 19. So the crown is so significant because of its actual name. So immediately when I heard crown, crown, what did it remind me of? Is anyone familiar with a little mysticism and Hasidic teachings? There's the crown, there's the keser. And in the crown, there are two types of crowns. There's a negative crown, like a virus, a disease, a cancer. And then there's a crown of holiness, a sacred one. And that's where Purim enters. Haman, the arch villain, the one who wanted to create total genocide of the Jewish people. The story of Purim was progeny of Haman Agog, Agog of Amalek, Amalek, the arch enemy. And what do, do, do the mystics and the Hasidic masters teach us about Amalek? Reish is goyim Amalek, the verse says. Amalek is the head of all nations. And his end will be complete annihilation, complete elimination. When he's the head, the head of all nations, means that he's separate and apart. And in some places explains the keser of klipa, the crown of toxic energy. We all have our toxins, we all have our voices and destructive voices that try to tempt us, seduce us into doing something selfish, unhealthy, abusive, hurtful. But often it's connected with some justification. I'm selfish. I'm greedy. It's not appropriate, but there's some reason. But then there's what's called chutzpah beletaga, a haughtiness, an arrogance that has no reason. It's the arrogance that is un- irrational, that comes from Kesser. It's not a explanatory, explained a type of rational type of temptation. It's one that supersedes it all. It is stubborn, irrational. Think of the Nazis, another personification of Amalek, of Kesser. So this is the worst possible type of scenario because it's not something that can be discussed, negotiated. This is it. Hatred of the Jewish people is completely irrational. There's nothing you can say. A type of chutzpah, that haughtiness, all originates from Amalek. The plot thickens. 100 years ago, centennial, 100 years ago this week, on Purim, the Rebbe Rashab, the fifth Chabad Rebbe, delivered a discourse on this precise verse. Purim at the meal, Reish is goyim Amalek. He actually delivered on a second discourse as well that lasted for three hours and ten minutes. As Moses raised his hands in the war against Amalek, against this crown. And in it he was also facing, it wasn't just a discourse, there was another coronavirus taking place then, a psychological, emotional, spiritual one. It was called Bolshevism who again in a completely irrational way wanted to eradicate everything that was Jewish 
everything of faith, everything religious, enemy of human beings. And that 1920 Purim was particularly dangerous because they came to the home of the Rebbe Rashab where the Hasidim had gathered. That was illegal to gather. And there was Lachaim on the table, Purim. And there was money because they had collected money for the Rebbe's institutions and organizations and activities. All illegal. And as they walked in, the previous Rebbe, the son of the Rebbe Rashab, Rebbe Yusuf Itzok, was terrified. As were the others. They wanted to cover it up. And the Rebbe said these words. Holiness indoors. This is all klipa. This is negative energy. Toxic energy doesn't have any substance. Let us shine light and they will automatically disappear. When it documented what happened 100 years ago, people were amazed because that's exactly what happened. They came, they looked, but they left. And he began to say, Reish is goyim Amolek v'acharei Amolek, the keser, the irrational force of chutzpah, of haughtiness and arrogance, which throws cold water and apathy on everything, antithetical to anything that is refined, that is holy, that is sacred, that is bright, that is virtuous. He was facing that corona klippa, that corona crown of klippa, that back then in 1920, and said, we will be complete, don't be afraid. And not just complete in our essence, not just complete in our inner sanctum where we're insulated, and protected, but also in our expansion, in our extension. A few weeks later, when the Rebbe Rasha passed away in the second of Nisan, at the end of Shiva, with Shabbos, Tzav, his son, his only son, the Rabbi Yisuf Yitzhak, said the same discourse, Reish is going Mamolik, and expounded on the same ideas. And of course, it was all relevant. And as Moses raised his hands, Vagova Yisrael, Israel dominated. It took time. But ultimately, who prevailed? So now let's bring it back to Purim 2020. In midst of this madness of the coronavirus. And we're dealing with a Haman, as we read in the Megillah. And what does Haman say? When the king wants to reward Mordechai for his bravery, for his saving the king's life, Achishverosh's life. So he asked Haman, what should I do for someone who I treasure? whom I want to reward. Haman thought it was himself. So he said, give him the garment of the king. Give him the crown of the king. The crown. Because Haman coveted the crown. Amalek wants the crown. But that he did not give the king. As Rashi explains. The garment, yes. The, key, the crown belongs to holiness. So we all have the coronavirus psychologically, emotionally within us. And what is its antidote? Keser of Gedusha, to do super rational good acts of goodness and kindness to help another. Not even if it doesn't make sense, just like there's baseless hatred, there's also baseless love. That's the antidote that we bring the Keser, more than just our faculties, our intelligent, our cognitive faculties, and our emotional ones, but we bring our super rational faculties, our Keser, our crown, into the picture. And that automatically eliminates the crown of Haman, of Amalek, and of all every form of coronavirus, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. Now, of course, this goes without saying that we have to be prudent to do everything possible to protect ourselves and our families, to listen to medical authorities. Yes, some of it sounds very radical. Quarantines, every day another piece of news that is frightening people. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt that trying to contain a spreading of a crown of a virus. The personal lesson is what we need to look at our own haughtiness, our own arrogance, and eliminate it by doing something that is with fortitude and strength and super rational, that counters the stubbornness and the arrogance of the toxic coronavirus that can contaminate every human being and everyone on earth. That is our lesson for Purim 2020. It was difficult to ignore the confluence and convergence of all these factors. The coronavirus, Purim, Crown, Haman, Amalek. A hundred years ago, the discourse is delivered. 
literally a hundred years ago. So it definitely serves a lesson for each of us. And just as Purim taught us that no matter how powerful that crown was of Haman and of Amalek and its stubbornness and its arrogance, it ultimately was completely eliminated. Yehof chiyom emelu. There were days, the doors, the days were transformed into layhudim ayseiru v'simchu v'sasim yekar. For the Jewish people, v'gova Yisrael, they dominated, they prevailed. In the great celebration, super rational celebration of Adela Yada of Purim. But it's interesting in the discourse, he points out, how do you say it's completely eliminated when we know that the grandchildren of Haman became scholars in Bnei Brak, scholars in Torah Academy? So they weren't completely eliminated. So he said there's two ways to eliminate a virus, spiritual virus, the coronavirus. Number one, the first way is by immediately eliminating. Another way is slowly eliminating, and then you redeem the sparks. So the same should be with our, the coronavirus of our time, that it should be completely eradicated, but not just eradicated, that what we learn from it, the vaccines developed, the lessons learned, should redeem its sparks and we should become even more stronger, healthier, greater people, more successful materially and spiritually in every possible way. Everyone have a very freilich and happy, exuberant, unbridled, unfettered Purim.